Happy Hour Fun. Hello. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today I'm going to react to something that's been on my list for a long time. Honestly, every time I look at reacting to it, I'm like, this video is 27 minutes long. But today, I, I mean, I think I'm going to make it a two-parter. Because I don't think anybody wants to watch me react to this for an hour. But I'm going to make you just over the course of two days. I mean, of course, tomorrow I'm going to do this week in Australia. I don't know. I don't plan this stuff out that well, guys. But next week, the first video I make will be part two. Anyway, let's do this. It's by 101 Facts. 101 Facts about Australia. Let's watch the first 50. Check them out. Link down below. Good eye, mother factors. Wait, that's kind of racist. What did he call me? Isn't it? Oops, sorry. <laughs> Good evening, mother factors, and welcome to this down under edition of what? Oh, mother factor. 101 facts. I'm Sam, and today I'm here to talk about a country with quite a reputation of being stupendously beautiful, but also really bloody scary. Yes. Okay, where's this guy from? He's not Australian. It's, it's Aus He's like from the UK or something. Australia. And what creatures are truly okay. the most dangerous in Australia? Can the trees Vegemite. Is there really spontaneously explode? Can anybody get me cheaper tickets to go out there with? Because man, oh man, it's a pricey buy. I even consider United. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered. So pack your shrimps, barbies, lollies, corkscrew hats, boomerangs, didgeridoos, and all your other stereotypical items into a bag and make like Dorothy. Get it? Dorothy? Get it was? Oh, it doesn't matter. This is 101 facts about Australia. Number one. I'm ready. So then, Australia, the big Oz, as nobody calls it. Where to begin? <laughs> Well, Australia is the smallest inhabited continent of the world's pretty neat collection of seven, and is also considered the world's largest island at 7.6 million square kilometers. That's, that's an interesting little dichotomy there. I never thought about that. Smallest continent, biggest island. I don't really understand that, to be honest. As I've said a million times, like, isn't every continent an island? Except Europe. For whatever reason, Europe and Asia are, like, connected. But that whole thing... Isn't that an island? Number two. Good news for people who don't enjoy washing, social interaction, or a combination of the two, Australia is very, very spacious. The country has one of the lowest population densities in the world. In fact, there are three people for every square kilometer of land. Three people for every square kilometer. You know what I mean? I don't know why I said you know what I mean. I meant to say, you know what? I want to compare that to Japan. Population density. Holy shit, 328! I just chose Japan because I know it's pretty highly density. Densified, as they say. Number the world, so in it's over a hundred times more. There are three people for every square kilometer of land. Number three. I know what you're thinking. Sam, you daft pommy. Australia isn't even its proper name. And yes, you'd be right in saying that. The official name for the country, after all, is the Commonwealth of Australia. Oh my god. Hmm. I don't know if I I don't know if that's a profound realization or not, but it definitely makes me scratch my head like, oh. Okay. Okay. Number So Australia starts with a C. If someone said, "What does the country known as Australia, what letter does it start with?" A C. The <laughs> four. The last word of that name comes from the Latin terra australis, which isn't a plant that sounds like it'd give you a nasty rash on the bottom, but does mean southern land. Which is kind of true, really, given that it's the land at the south of the world, isn't it? Look, see? South of the world. Number five. <laughs> the country is split into eight states. Southern Australia, Western Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania, Northern Territory, Australian Capital Territory, and Queensland. Mmm, Australian Capital Territory. I didn't know that was a state. Which is what the UK should be called, really, given it was named after the Queen Vic. Number six. Along with those states, Australia also has a nice collection of islands, too. They have the Partridgean Norfolk Island, the festive Christmas Island, the very good at listening, and... The Christmas Island. Is that the one that was like the LGBTQ island or something? I know, <laughs> I mean, that's really random, but also it looks like a dingo. Let's continue. God damn, why do people text me when I'm trying to 
react to video. Very tasty. Never text me. McDonald and Herd Islands and the Coco's Keeling Islands. Nice. You know what? I just need to settle this. What? What? Which island was this? It's not the Christmas Island, is it? The Gay and Lesbian Kingdom of the Coral Sea Islands. Yeah, I don't think it's the Christmas Island. I don't know why I thought that. But now I'm corrected. Number seven. Now, I don't know about you, but I associate Australia with lovely, warm, baking weather, but it ain't all like that. In fact, the continent of Australia technically includes some of the Antarctic Territory. <laughs> Number eight. Yeah, you, get a, you get a cold chill in the air sometimes, don't you? Quick uh, pop quiz for you here. What is the... They also bottle up that air because it's the cleanest air in the world or something. They'll bottle it up and test it. Capital of Australia. Well, well done to the guys who said the left. Canberra. To A, hardy ha ha, very funny. But a big wrong to those who said Sydney. It's actually Canberra, which is a whole. Actually, the capital letter of Australia would be C, because it's actually called the Commonwealth of Australia. 153 miles away from Sydney. Number nine. Canberra. Other cities in Australia, or rather other cities people are likely to mistake for the capital, include Perth, Brisbane, Adelaide, and Melbourne. Mm hmm. Number 10. That was a fact. Okay. If you live in Melbourne and want to die for some reason, well, good luck. Melbourne beat 140 other cities in The Economist's global livability ranking. <laughs> Wait, that's not what livability means? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> no, it means you're least likely to want to die if you live in Melbourne. It's Actually, I don't think it means that either. Had this title for a whopping six years in a row. But that's gotta be correlated. Since 2011. Number 11. <laughs> the country's population is over 24 million Aussies. 380,000 of those yeah. people live in Canberra. There's also over. Is it over 24? Why did I think. Is it at 29 now? 27. God, why do I always forget that? I always think it's 29. 27. 60 million. Ca it's growing pretty quick because this video is seven years old. And back then it was 24. Kangaroos too, not to be confused. 80,000 of those people live in Canberra. There's also mm. over 60 million kangaroos too, not to be confused by the way with the local populace. They don't. You know what? How many deer in USA? I need this as some kind of like, um, you know, something to compare it to. Because I, I consider the deer kind of like the kangaroos of America. Anyway, 36 million, not nearly as many per person. That's only one for every 10 per people. Whereas there's three kangaroos or two kangaroos for every person. Wow. I don't like that. Take from experience. In Australia. And a black eye. Number 12. 61.1% of the population are Christian, 2.5% are Buddhist, 2.2 Muslim, and 1.3 Hindu. Not sure how many are Jedi or Grutus today. What? I guess I'm a little surprised there's not more. Well, I know there's a lot of like Asian um inhabitants right so i don't know i'm i'm pretty ignorant about are, are the, the, would that be hindu for the most part i don't know guys whatever only two percent hindu i guess i thought that would be higher Grootist? oh yeah that's the new religion now didn't you know i am Groot. <laughs> number 13. the incredibly difficult to pronounce mount cosy costco is the highest mountain in australia Sta mount cosy costco at a whopping 7,300... I actually thought that was remarkably easy to say. 10 feet. But I will say the name, Kasi Kasko. Yeah, I wouldn't even know that's how that was pronounced. I would have said it was Kashiasko. Is the highest ma mountain in Australia, standing at a whopping 7,310 feet. Number 14. Okay. Popular landmark that also sounds like an alien race, Uluru, is also known as Ayers Rock. It can be found standing around doing absolutely nothing right in the center of the country, and at 2,831 feet, or just over 470 Hugh Jackmans, it's the world's <laughs> largest rock. Oh, sorry Stonehenge. I'm told it's not the size that matters anyway. Number 15. Just a Stonehenge is not even on the same order of magnitude. The coast of Queensland in the Coral Sea is the Great Barrier Reef. The reason why it's so great is because it's the world's largest coral reef system and it's made up of over 2,900 different reefs. Number 16. Okay. 
The reef stretches over 2,300 kilometers and has probably appeared on your Facebook feed at least 21 times in the past decade, am I right? It's so massive it can be seen from space and is the biggest structure made by a living organism. <laughs> you know, for as well known and as amazing as the Great Barrier Reef is, there's surprisingly not like that much content about it. I always thought that was weird. Except my, d actually no, I'm not gonna make that joke. I'm a better man than that. Number 17. Even though the national language is English, over 200 different languages are spoken in the country, including Italian, Cantonese, Arabic, and Mandarin. What does it mean that they're spoken? Just that somebody, somebody there can speak that language? Because who was speaking Italian in Australia? Like, there's, is there a town where they speak uh, Italian? I believe that someone from Italy moved to Australia. Hundred different languages are spoken in the country, including Italian, Cantonese, Arabic, and Mandarin. Number 18. Australia has a vast and frankly at times deadly ecosystem with many unique creatures and plants that don't appear. That thing looks deadly. Anywhere else in the world, like rare Pokemon that only appeared in red and not blue. I mean, that was irritating, wasn't it? Anyway, these include wombats, dingoes, kangaroos, koalas, platypus, and wallabies. Number 19. Kangaroos can be eaten. Yeah, sorry, Joey. It's actually... Not only can they be, they are. You know, anything can be eaten. Considered a leaner and healthier alternative to beef and lamb. Tasty. Number 20. And I... How long have I been saying I'm going to try kangaroo? I'm not even going to say it, but I will. D. As well as kangaroo meat being available over the counter, you can also get crocodile meat and emu. And from the sounds of the... You can eat emu? Next fact coming up, it's not the crocodiles getting revenge you should be scared of. Number 21. Emus must be quite an aggressive bunch because in 1932 there was actually an emu... I know you can get an emu egg. And they're freaking gigantic. Emu war. Oh no, allow me to tell you the tale. Number 22. Ooh. The Great Emu War began because of the influx of emus throughout Western Oz. Flocks of the six foot tall bird would destroy masses of farming crops and land in a brutal attack on resources and supply lines. Actually, it was more because they were hungry and they were there, but still, who knows what's going on in those nefarious bird brains. <laughs> Number 23. To combat the problem, ex-World War I soldiers were hired in the war against emus armed with guns. However, this didn't work and the farmers requested well, more- there weren't very many of them, to be fair. More assistance- The soldiers. ...since from the soldiers, but were denied. Eventually, bounties were put on emus' heads and this seemed to work as over 57,000 bounties were claimed in total. Number 20- Oh my god, I mean, if you're making money to kill emus, not, a, not that I have anything against emus, but- that just sounds like fun, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe that's deranged. Maybe that's a deranged thing to say. Killing animals sounds fun, but I'm not gonna lie. Going out in the outback with some with the boys to hunt down some emus to make money to like, you know, hand them in as a bounty? It just sounds fun. Four. There's me. also some pretty scary creepy crawlies in particular. Sorry, arachnophobes, but spiders. Dun dun dun. There's over 1,500 species of spiders throughout- Yeah, and they'll literally be like that, like in the air, like above the sidewalk. is like a cloud of spiders. <laughs> this is the craziest shit you, you learn about Australia, man. The country, and some of them have pretty gross venom. Number 25. Two of the deadliest spiders in the world can be found in Australia. The red back spider and the Sydney funnel web spider are among the most poisonous and aggressive spiders in the world. <sighs> Num Not surprising. Number 26. You'd think with that kind of thing going on, the death toll for these things would be huge, right? Well, no, actually. In fact, apart from one case in 2016, nobody has died thanks to an arachnid in over 40 years in Australia. 40 years? That is an interesting kind of funny thing, huh? Because even over here in America, you have like the Black Widow spider and people talk about how deadly it is, but it's like, no one ever dies. That's crazy that someone actually did die as recently as 2016. What is that story? That's pretty sad. Number I could imagine if you have like a comorbidity, like if you're, you know, if you're 90 years old and you were gonna die next week anyway, and then you get bit, it'll probably kill you. 27. 
In fact, horses and cows are actually more likely to kill you over there, with them being responsible for over 100 deaths in the past 10 years. So be afraid of these guys. Cows? Be very afraid. Look at the blood in that room. What's the, what's the breakup between those two? Because a horse, okay, I can imagine getting stomped. <laughs> That's pretty gruesome, but, you know, I can imagine it. Ouch. But a cow? Eyes. <sighs> Number 28. That being said, however, Australia does have an awful lot of snakes in it, making it a place that Indiana Jones probably doesn't want to visit anytime soon. There is, in total, 140 different species of snake lurking in Australia. You know what? I want to know how many snakes are there in Australia. Total. I feel like that's a question for chat GPT, because no one else on the internet is going to have that, that answer. That's kind of a stupid question. You always go to, gotta go to AI when you have a stupid question. How many snakes total are there in Australia? And this better give me an answer, not some bull crap. No, I didn't ask that. I didn't ask about the amount of species. I said, how many total? <laughs> Tune into this episode of me arguing with AI. Oh my gosh. We're going back in time to Wolfram Alpha, guys. Do you know this website? When you had a stupid question like this, Wolfram Alpha used to be the place to go. It's an amazing website. Zero, guys. Apparently zero. Zero Olympic medals won by snakes. Thanks, Wolfram Alpha. That's why uh, AI has taken over. <laughs> Tens of millions. Thanks, AI. Oh, somewhere between 20 to 100 million snakes. There you go. There you freaking go. Number 29. Sometimes you really got to berate AI. Like, tell me what you know. See different species of snake lurking in Australia. Number 29. Particular little slippery arseholes to look out for include the eastern brown snakes, which are responsible for the most snake deaths out of any of them. It's also rated second in the world in terms of toxicity. Ooh. Hmm. Number 30. Can you really buy a purse made out of an eastern brown snake? Yes, yes, snakes are scary, and yes, that one, you know, is, is killy. But actually, though, it's not quite as bad as you think. While, yes, snakes can kill, between 2010 and 2016, only 35 people died due to snakes nibbling on them. That's more than I would have thought. Number 31. Once again, something else is more dangerous than snakes that you may not first think of. Bees and wasps. Almost 42,000 admissions to hospital between 2000 and 2013 were down to these bumbling bastards and anaphylactic shocks. Oh, they're so evil. Well, how many died? Look at them. Number 32. None. In fact, even more than bees, you should be scared of thunderstorms. In November of 2016, rising temperatures in Melbourne started a thunderstorm, which in turn caused a mass thunderstorm asthma event. Number 33. Over so, wait, what? In November of 2016, rising temperatures in Melbourne started a thunderstorm, which in turn caused a mass thunderstorm asthma event. A mass thunder thunderstorm asthma event? Okay, I guess I gotta react to this because I have no idea what that even means. That sounds interesting. Did you say 2013 thunderstorm? At was it asthma event? <laughs> Number 33. Over 8,000 people were admitted to hospital because of the thunderstorm, and over nine people died due to asthma. Can you just? Is he allowed to do that? Take a fact. And then the next fact be like just a continuation of it. I guess I'll, I guess you're allowed to. It's hard to come up with 101 facts. Isn't it? Asthma. And people were admitted to hospital because of the thunderstorm and over nine people died due to asthma. This kind of thunderstorm has happened five times in Australia's history. What? Number 34. Also be careful of koala bears too, because well, it's not as bad as death. Yes, but you can get chlamydia from them and no, not in the means you're thinking of. And frankly, if you're thinking of that, you deserve to get it in that way too. You can actually get koala bear chlamydia if you get exposed- What did you think I would think? ...to the infected creature's urine. Number 35. Australia is 14 hours ahead of the US and seasons are, to us in Europe and the States, all the wrong way round too. Summer is December to February, autumn or fall is March to May, winter is June to August, and spring is September to November. 
Number 36. That is a really fun fact. Obviously, I already knew that, but I just had to say, that's always fun. I have fun every day. I think to myself, you know, you know, like right now, it's turning to, well, it's really turning to like winter. It's getting cold outside right now. And I'm like, <laughs> over there in Australia, it's warming up. That's wild. This means Christmas is in summertime for Australia, but there aren't really any massive differences into how it's celebrated. Santa might have to wear a mankini when he goes down there, though. <laughs> However, for Christmas dinner instead of turkey, Aussies apparently eat prawns and lots of them. Number 37. It was reported by the University of Sydney that at Bondi Beach in Sydney, 40,000 people visited the beach on Christmas Day. Oh man, imagine that. That sounds good, but sand in all the presents. <laughs> Number 38. Okay. In fact, in a record only they could probably ever win, Australia won the world record for the most number of surfing Santas at any one time. <laughs> if you want to try and beat that record, by the way, it's 320 Santas you need. What? Just in case you want to try it in, I don't know, Felix Stone? Did they all coordinate it or did they just all happen to show up? Because I would actually believe that. On Christmas Day, I'm sure quite a few surfing Santas just show up to the beach in Australia. Number 39. It's a slight cliche, yes, but Aussies love alcohol. Around 1.35... You know, that is a cliche about quite a few countries. <laughs> Germany, Ireland, Australia. Is it a cliche about America? That's. I feel like the cliche about America in terms of alcohol is just that kids are really, like, um, immature with it and binge drink it and die. Trillion bottles of wine are produced by the country and which there's truth to. In 2012, it was estimated that Australians spend over 14.1 billion Australian dollars each year on alcohol. No, not individually, by the way, as a collective. <laughs> well, maybe some wow. of them. Number 40. In fact, former Prime Minister Bob Hawke was actually in the Guinness Book of World Records in 1954 in his academia days for beer guzzling. He managed to slurp down 2.5 pints of beer in 11 seconds. God, 11 seconds? We like to drink with Bob, because Bob is a legend. Oh, mate. <laughs> Sorry, I just realised only a certain age of people in Britain will understand what I just did there. <laughs> My bad. Number 41. They love to drink so much that in 1965, Thomas Angro from South Australia invented the wine cask, aka wine in a box, which can hold up to one gallon of- You guys invented boxed wine? Of wine. The mean- What a legendary- I mean, you invented Wi-Fi and boxed wine. Over that is, you know, you can pat yourself on the back for those two things revolutionized the world equally, I would say. Life. According to worldatlas.com, obesity is a little bit of an issue in Australia. It's oh, ranked no. as the 26th most obese country in the world. Which that ain't nothing. A little no. bit of an issue in Australia. It's That ain't nothing. 29% of people... Oh my gosh, wait, America's not the most obese country in the world? Man, the internet will just lie to you. It will just lie and lie and mislead you, won't it? To where it makes you think America's for sure the most obese country in the world. It's all the way down here at number 12. Freaking Fiji is more obese. That blows my mind. I'm looking this up right now. Most obese, even though it's right in front of me. I just need to see it, like, for myself. Who? Everybody raise your hand if you would have thought. America, USA, was number one most obese country. Oh, we've rose up the ranks a little bit to number 10, but we're still, we're still number 10. Oh, looks like Fiji's no longer as obese as us. Where did they go? <sighs> that blows my mind, guys. I'm not going to lie. What is it, Niu? Ranked as the 26th most obese country in the world, with 29.9% of the country being overweight. Huh, I thought kangaroo was meant to be leaner and better for you. Hmm. <laughs> Number 43. 
Those furry boots that make you sound like a caveman that were a hit about five years ago, Ugg boots, originate from Australia. That's shocking. That is pretty shocking that Australia invented what was one of absolutely one of the biggest trends, fashion trends in America ever. Ever. Every woman had to have her Ugg boots of all ages. From toddler to grandma, they all needed the Ugg boots. I'm talking maybe 2008, 2007. And they were invented in Australia? Where it's 100 degrees? Well, I know it gets chilly, I know that. But how often are you wearing boots? They were given the name after the creator's wife told them they were ugly, apparently. <laughs> Number 44. The first supposed recorded sighting of the country was by the Dutch in 1606. Dutch navigator Wilhelm Janszoon sailed to meet with the Aborigines. The Dutch charted and mapped the whole of the western and northern coastline and named the continent New Holland. But they had no intention of settling. Hmm, bit like my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Number 45. According to historian Gavin Menzies, the Chinese, led by Admiral Zheng, had already beaten them to it in around 1420. Number 46. Clearly not happy letting the Dutch and the Chinese have all the fun, Captain James Cook of England then sailed over in 1770. Captain he mapped Cook. the East Coast, which he named New South Wales, and claimed it for the British Empire. What can I say, we were greedy back then. Number 47. The British government then sent ships to New South Wales. See, look at them go, wee! When they settled, well, they probably put the kettle on first, but then after that, a flag was raised on Sydney Cove on the 26th of January, 1788. 1788. Number 48. In case you recognise the date of the 26th of January, Australians, it's Ellen DeGeneres' birthday, but also the country's National Australia Day. Number 49. Of course. The indigenous population was between 75,000 and 1 million in 1788, but began to decline over 150 years following the settlement. Many died because of disease, but many were also killed in conflict with the new settlers. Number. That's a shame, isn't it? Obviously. I mean, same history or similar history to over here in America. I, I shouldn't call, I shouldn't say it's the same because I don't I do not know. We might have been worse. I don't know. We were pretty freaking bad to the natives. Number 50. The British used to send their convicts and felons all the way over to Australia to prevent overcrowding in British prisons. However, you didn't really have to do all that much to warrant the penalty of being sent to the New World. Petty crimes like stealing used to get you killed, but instead they just relocated you to the other to paradise. side of the world. Number Except a third of them would die on the way. Okay. Those were fun. I mean, what a great job to put together this many facts. Granted, I know a lot of them, but... It's still very entertaining and very insightful because there's just so many facts being rapid fired at you. It's fun. And that's the first 50. And I'm going to react to the next 50 uh, next week. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow for this week.